Nick Hajazi, the founder of the Mendez Cartel, here with the... The co-founder. So the co-founder, as you know, there's the co-founder of the Mendez Cartel. I'm the founder, he's the co-founder. He lives in Colombia in the headquarters, the Mendez Cartel headquarters based in Colombia. So obviously he can't be with us now because he's in Colombia. But I thought in these videos now, I'm going to start including him more because he hasn't been in a video in a long time since we last trained together, since he was last in England, like... A few like a good good few months ago in the summer i haven't seen him in a long time so i'm putting him in the videos he's going to be included in the videos as you can see here on screen his face is here to get him more involved he's the co-founder guys today is a rest and recovery day today what i did guys was something slightly different i fasted today because well i fasted in the late hours of the the day just to reset my body i didn't do any abs and cardio today because i fasted my body needed a little bit of there's occasionally here and there my body needs to fast, I take some food out to allow myself to recover, and then I'll re resume normal bulking, eating 5,000 calories a day from tomorrow. Um, the co-founder does a lot of fasts. Before I get into the video, guys, and I start answering questions, today on rest days, I answer questions. I'll talk, you know, I've got loads of YouTube questions, and we're going to answer them, me and the co-founder. Before I get into the video, guys, if you want to get in great shape naturally, join the Mendez Cartel, my online community where we our, our online community, where you have full access to all our training programs. The, the Advanced Bro Split is being released this week. You'll have 24-7 support from us via Zoom calls, um, via the community feed. It's a fully interactive community with all, full access to all our programs where we can really help you. Link in the description. And guys, if you're interested in one-to-one -one coaching and you'd rather do that, go to my Instagram, link in the description, and DM us, cartel, and we can get started with that as well. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. If you want, if you want a more, if you want a more specific approach, a more detailed, so Nick and I literally grab you by the hand. Uh, you have not only Nick, you have me too. I'm a certified sport nutritionist, and I've been training for a long time too. So we literally were a team to work with you. So if you want, if you're interested in the coaching, just to one of the Nick's platforms, just send cartel or underneath this video, uh, comment cartel. And we'll try to get to get to you and get in contact so we can get you started. Yeah, yeah. So guys, all those links are in the description. All right, people. Like I said today, guys, today I, I fasted. There comes a point in the bulk. I've been bulking like f over five months now where my body needs a small little window where I don't eat because I'm pretty much eating every two, three hours. Sometimes waking up in the middle of the night to eat. Like it's not, my body needs a, a break and, and to, to, to stop digesting food because I'm constantly digesting food and that just weighs down on your body. So every now and then I'll take a little window of time where I don't eat. Tomorrow I, I will resume normal eating though. So I didn't do abs and cardio today because I because I fasted. Tomorrow I go back to normal eating. Let's get into the questions now for the YouTube videos. Let's get to it. All right, first question is, is from NG77 double eight zero what would you do to keep growing muscle if you couldn't raise the weight anymore like in a training at home with a limited weight scenario so what would we do if we were training at home that's a great question let me answer this one what bro the let, let's be real like these questions like why do you not have access to a gym to begin with i i feel like People try to find all these shortcuts to train at home, to do like these little things. Obviously, like if some if it's impossible for you, getting that setup would be more to to like get a little bit of improvement. But come on, if you're invested into this, like the gym is the number one thing. Like you shouldn't even question yourself about getting a gym membership. Yeah. You know? I think Nick and I have bought us like a few subscriptions in our lives so almost like I'd pay the year right away. And that's something I'll know I'll use. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you're not getting stronger, it's going to be really, really difficult for you to gain any type of muscle. You might increase, you can increase the reps. Obviously, that's a way of progressing. But after a point, adding more reps is just not going yeah. to make it. So, yeah. if I was you, bro, I would just do my best to find myself a gym with good equipment that you can progress on. Yeah, listen, bro, you can do limited stuff at home, like calisthenics, pull-ups, you can buy like a, a pull-up bar, or you can do push-ups, you can do weighted push-ups, you, you can do certain things, you can you get light dumbbells, and you can do limited, limited equipment training and still make some progress, 
But like Juan said, like the co-founder said, if you really want to make serious progress, bro, you'll find a way to get to the gym. You'll find a way to make it happen. You'll find a way to really, to really get it done, okay? So try your best to get to a gym. Really do your best to get to a gym. But thank you for the question. All right, next question is from Jose5675. How flat, how flat bench doesn't have any athletic carryover when, is, when it's the go-to exercise to improving pushing strength for athletes like NFL players? So the question is, NFL players do flat bench. Why wouldn't it have athletic carryover? Because I, I did a video on this last week. So I'll quickly touch upon this. I don't do flat bench. I don't think aesthetically it has great carryover. Athletically, you can still get a decent amount out of it. I think it's, it's the old traditional American upper body lift. Bench press. How much do you bench, bro? How much do you bench, man? How much do you bench? Like you see all the NFL players doing it. And it, and it does have some athletic carryover, don't get me wrong. If you can get crazy strong on flat bench, you're still, you're still, still going to have some kind of athletic carryover to your sport. But are you telling me that if these guys did incline bench, it wouldn't be more beneficial? If you think about it athletically, all your, all your athletic power comes from the upper chest and front delts. It doesn't come from the lower, lower chest. When are, you, when are you ever pushing a guy down? You're pushing guys up most of the time. So yes, I think it does have some athletic carryover flat bench, but I think if they did upper, upper, if they did upper, if they did incline, incline bench instead, instead of flat bench, I think it'd, even, it'd have even more athletic carryover and be even more beneficial. And the reason I think they do it is because of media. It's because it's that traditional American lift. They just want to keep it in yeah. for, for those reasons. But yeah, let's yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, my, my, my opinion, my opinion in this is like, I bet you these guys do bench, but they're doing way more stuff besides bench. It's way more stuff. Like the emphasis is not bench press. Like these guys are not bench pressing to get, like they, they might do a little bit bench press, but the, the, the rest of the training, if you see how athletes train, they don't train like like powerlifters do. They use different machines. They use different methods. They do higher reps, lower reps. Like the type of bench rest we're used to is not the type of bench rest we do. So it's not even it's not even it's not even that important for them, you know, because their 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 training routine is so huge and they have such different movements. And if you go to the gym gyms, these athletes train at they have equipment you haven't even seen. So yeah. I haven't done I haven't done bench press in ages and I don't plan on starting for sure. Yeah, same here. I haven't done flat bench probably in like four years. All right, next question is from Matthew Wewit9249. Do you have a target body weight in mind or just going as far as you can regarding the bulk? Um 300. for 350. 350 is the goal. 350 350 is the goal. Yeah, well, I want to go to 350. No, I'm joking now. 300. I don't know, man. I think I've already pushed the body weight quite far. I'm close to, you know, I'm, wrapped, I'm around, I weighed myself this morning, was around 217, 218, um, in that kind of range. So closing in on, on the 220, 100 kilo mark. Hopefully not higher than 240. I think that'd be a bit extreme. I mean, I always take it too far, but yeah. I don't have an exact goal, but I'd probably say 240, 250. <laughs> but even that might be a touch too much. All right, next question. All right, this is a good I think co-founder will be able, to be able to answer this question a lot better than me. Two questions for rest day. This is from, again, Matthew. This is from the same guy, Matthew Werwitz, 9249. Am I right that you started at 58 kg and now are around 95 kg? And the second question, do you drink alcohol or smoke weed? Honestly, the... The funnest and most motivating channel I've subscribed to in a long time. Love the work. Thank you very much, brother. I'll answer the first question and then the co-founder can answer the second question about alcohol and weed. All right. He's a, he's a specialist in those areas. <laughs> All right. So I'll answer the first question. Did I start at 58 kg? I started in the 50s. When I started training, um, I was so, bro, I was a long distance runner, a football player. Like I was so skinny, man. You can ask the co-founder. I would, I would, I, I, I had a little bit of definition and muscle, like I, I did like some kind of weight, but I was very, very like lightweight, skinny, long distance. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you were trying to be a football player. Yeah. I had that football build, so I was very skinny. I was in the, like, I think I was the high 50s before I started eating properly. I, I, wouldn't, I didn't know how to eat. And then, yeah, I've gained a lot of weight over the years, so yeah. All right, this is the, now the second part for the co-founder. Do you drink alcohol or smoke weed? 
Okay, so um, as you guys, if you guys don't know, I'm Colombian. So here in South America, people start really, really early with alcohol and weed and all this stuff. So yeah, I think I've tr I've tried it. I've been on it for a while. I've smoked weed multiple times, alcohol. But the conclusion is always the same for me. It's like it brings no benefit to your life. Like you can you can get everything done without it. You know you can you can have good social skills without it. When you like, for example, I've smoked for to drink to go to go to the gym is the worst. I, I don't really enjoy it that much. Like my fo I lose focus. So um. Currently, I do. I don't do. I mean, I drink alcohol sometimes, but in reality, fitness and all these recreational drugs don't go together. I wouldn't suggest you do them. Like it's not like I haven't found any benefits. I'm yet to find something good, and I've done it multiple times. And and it's like it obviously it gives you it gives you happiness for a short period of time, but it sucks the living shit out of you after after a while. So there's. Just, just keep it to a minimum. If you want to do it, do it every now and then. But don't be one of those guys who's smoking every day and drinking every single weekend because you're gonna find no, you're gonna get no benefits from it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Listen, when it comes to me, like, I've, I, I, I've smoked weed very rarely. I've done it a few times with a co-founder. Um, I've like maybe a couple, like maybe like five times in my entire life, I've done it. I've done it with a co-founder a few times, but that's about it. I don't smoke weed. I drink very rarely. Um, when I'm with the co-founder, we do drink occasionally, um, and occasionally here and there I'll drink, but again, very rare, very, very rare. Um, I'm the kind of guy, man, I get massive hangovers. Like one night of drinking for me, I need like three days, three, four days before I feel good again. An entire week for me. Yeah, like it takes a long time, and then the come down is so much worse. The anxiety you get, like the co-founder said, like you just don't feel good, it feels horrible, and it takes, it's going to the gym and getting in shape is all about getting in rhythm and getting in a groove and stacking good days. And when you drink, you ruin that momentum. 100%. All right, next question. Okay. From Goku Solos XN9 BJ. Yo, bro, great vid getting bigger, brother. Been bulking for about three months. All lean, started at 67 kg, now I'm 72 kg, I'm 17. What do you think my goal weight should be? Okay, great question. Um, so you've been bulking three months, you were 67 kg, now you're 72 kg, you said you're, you're, you're pretty lean. It's very hard to say, brother, um, what a goal weight is. For me, weight is only one part of the question. You know, we could say, oh, your goal weight should be 80, aim for 80, which could be a good marker, try and get up to 80 and try and stay lean at 80. But then again, we don't know how you're going to look at 80. It all comes down to the mirror. The scale is just one aspect. So really judge your physique in the mirror more than the weighing scale. And don't, I always say it's not, it's not good to have a, a goal in terms of weight. Have a cut. Let me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, continue, continue. No, no. Yeah, no, I was just literally saying, have, have, use, use the scale as kind of a, a good milestone, but don't rely on it too much. The, the mirror and the way you look is far more important. Yeah, I want to quickly touch on this because this is a topic that I've, like my, my closest friends, I've told them up so many times about this. It's like, like people people are so interested on what is your body fat percentage. It's like my, my, my friends come up to me and it's like, how much, what do you think my body fat percentage is? Or, or like when you sign up to a gym that they do you like these scans on these weighing scales that are on all these bullshit machines that they don't tell you anything. It's like data can only only tell you so much you know like we're all in this business for the same thing which is looking better you know being a little leaner having a little more muscle but like focusing on how much like how much body fat percentage i have how much weight i have that won't like it doesn't equate to anything you know like what what matters is the mirror so bro what i would say is just like bulk as hard as you can you're really young keep on the same track you say you're lean bulking keep lean bulking try to not gain too quick and um, just whenever you feel really, really fluffy, you see yourself, you're fluffy, your face starts uh, fattening up, you get a little bit of the love handles, that's a good sign to, to yeah. start cutting. So yeah. um, Judge it by yeah, the numbers. Yeah. Numbers don't tell anything. I mean, they only tell part of the story. Judge it by the mirror more, brother. All right, next question. Two more. From HZ1634. What's been the toughest plateau you had to overcome and how did you get past it? Okay, great question. Um, the toughest plateau, 
I'd probably say, you know, I've always, I've had plateaus in every lift, whether that be incline dumbbells, incline bench, deadlift, squat. Um, I've had plateaus in, in all the lifts. I'd probably say the hardest exercise that I tend to plateau on in terms of increasing my strength is the squat. Um, the squat for me has always been the hardest exercise to really get strong. And that's because of the way I squat. I squat high bar, very low, ask to grass. I make everything harder on myself in terms of the squat. So in terms of the biggest plateau I've had to deal with is, has been the squat. And the way you overcome it really is just by being patient, not rushing things. Do not attempt one rep maxes every week. A lot of people do that and think, oh, I'm gonna try and get stronger and stronger every week. You can't do that. Sometimes you have to drop the weight, go lower weight, higher reps, and really build your foundations and then build up stronger before you then attempt a one rep max. Don't be attempting one rep maxes every week. Do it, f do it rarely. I rarely attempt one rep maxes, maybe every three, four months. Yeah, let me quickly touch. So for me, a huge plateau I've had, and I think it could help for a few of you, is I recently did a bulk in, uh, last year I did like six to seven months of bulking too. I went up to 100 kilo. I'm, I'm 175 centimeters, 5'9", for, for reference, so you guys know. Like picture in, picture in your head. I had my biggest plateau was losing the weight, like to to get lean. I'm currently sitting like at seventy eight kilo, but I had a plateau, a plateau where I couldn't drop below eighty five. Like I, I dropped the first like fifteen kilo really quick, but losing the next ten was impossible. And it, I would go over and over again on the same way. Like I would go down, it would be so so hard. So I had a really bad plateau on. Um, yeah, and, and, and a weight loss phase. And what I did is I took a diet break and then I restarted again. And that's how I overcame it. By taking some time off dieting, and I think this can help a lot of you guys, just after 12 weeks of cutting, if you're stuck, after 12 weeks of cutting, it's just going to be, it's just going to be really, really hard to continue. Diet fatigue is going to go up and uh, it's just going to really, it's going to be really, really hard to keep dropping weight. So implementing diet breaks can be really, really beneficial. Yeah, well said, bro. Whether that's, you know, a, a plateau with your weight or a plateau with a lift in terms of strength, you know, a lot of the time there's, you know, just, it's, good, it's, a good, it's good to go back down to the foundations and start again, you know, sometimes. All right, last question. Last question is from Car Thick KX2XC. Bro, any tips to increase appetite for bulking? You want to start with this, bro? Weed. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Don't, don't, don't use those enhancements, but... <laughs> uh activity i think i think you can move a little more increase your step count that that can help a little to increase your appetite uh for example a big mistake i was making in my last book is that i was having huge huge meals so i would i would cramp like like three like four thousand calories in onto three meals and that was destroying my appetite yeah so i, I think just uh lowering frequency of eating uh oh no increasing frequency yeah. of eating having smaller meals um, more throughout the day, like more frequent throughout the day is going to help you stimulate that appetite. But in all honesty, uh, it's really hard. Like once you've been eating a lot for many, many, many weeks and months, it's going to be really hard to get that appetite back. And the, the, the best strategy you can do is take maybe a few days, one day off, like Nick is doing a fasting and that will increase your appetite back again. So Implement those 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 pit stops for you to keep going. Yeah, I think it's a good strategy. Yeah, for me, like Juan said, I think right, you, the biggest thing is something that I think I'm going to change a little bit is I'm eating five meals. Um, I'm eating five thousand calories a day, five meals, and like each meal is like a thousand calories. Um, and getting a thousand calories down in one sitting is very difficult. So I might increase the frequency of my meals, um, and maybe go six meals, seven meals, but have smaller meals, and that will allow my di that will aid in my digestion. So that might be a way, is higher frequency meals that are smaller calorie. Um, also, bro, you know, it's, it's about picking foods that work for your body. Everyone, certain foods digest better for certain people, certain foods don't. So find a diet that works for you. What I eat might not work for you. What someone else eats might not work for you. Find a diet that works for you and that, that really maximizes your digestion. Um, but man, bulking's hard. I'm gonna be, I've been bulking five months. My appetite's really low right now. It's hard to get the food down really bloody hard to just chuck that food down 
Um, it's, a, it's a bloody struggle. Um, and, and there is going to be part of it. If you've been bulking a long time like me, like five months, 151 days, where you're going to have to force feed a little bit. You can do everything right and you'll still have to force feed a little bit. That's just the reality. But yeah, thank you for the question. That is today's rest day video done and dusted. Um, finished. The co-founder is going to be appearing in all of these videos now. You haven't seen him in a while. I think it's good to just get him here, have the laptop, have his face here. Yeah, guys. Um, guys, like I say, man, another, another day in the yard. I'll see you tomorrow for push. Today was a fasting day. I did not do abs and cardio because I fasted. So just giving my body a little bit of a reset. And uh, yeah, guys. Guys, if you want to get in great shape naturally, join my community, the Mendez Cartel, link in the description. If you want personalized one-to-one -one coaching with me and the co-founder, go to my Instagram, DM me the word cartel, and we can get started there. It's been an honor, guys. Co-founder, any final thoughts? No, guys, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we're going to see how this format pans out. I think we thought about it like it would be a little comic, a little funny. So <laughs> if you guys like this, let us know in the comments, please. Uh, like the video. And uh, if you don't, we might need to start doing screen recordings and we can make, may, maybe the audio is going to be a little better. You're going to see my face a little better. So, yeah, uh, that's all I have to say, boys. Give yeah. Heart. All right, guys. The founder, the co-founder, two proper ladies, men, Nick Hajazi, the founder of the Mendez Cartel. The co-founder. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Join the Mendez Cartel. All links in the description. And as always... Long live King Charles III and God bless Sir Winston Churchill.